I have been working on this Range Rover for over a year. When I picked it up, it had um, well, been sitting for 10 years. The wheels had been robbed off of it. The transmission had been stolen out of it. And the interior had been leaked in for 10 years. The sunroof was leaking and it sat outside. And so it was gross, really, really gross. I went through and rebuilt, obviously, the outside, as you can see, and everything on the inside, recovered, reupholstered, designed, developed parts to get this thing back to where it is today. And the final step is getting the seats functional. The seats had these really complex controllers with like a with like memory in them, and uh, and they, they stopped working and I couldn't get them to work again. Now you can get these used on eBay. They're about $150 to $200 a piece, but they're not new. That's all reproduction. So I thought, well, why don't we try to make something better? Uh, something that's serviceable, something that doesn't cost a fortune to replace if needed and uh, bypass the whole computer memory control thing from the 80s. And so that's what we're doing. Now this will work on pretty much any luxury car seat from the 90s as far as I know. Uh, I had a Mercedes that had uh, six-way adjustable seats and I ended up ripping them out and putting racing seats in there. But I wish I would have known this or tried this because I could have saved those seats and it would have made everything a lot easier for me. Um, so hopefully this will help you if you need to try to save some seats. Um, this it works I don't know how long it'll work but it does work <laughs> for now um, so we're gonna we're gonna finish that up we're gonna install some speakers we're gonna button up the rest of the interior so I can check that off the list and have the inside of this car done just like the outside now we still have a few things to do but everything else is going somewhere to be done so I've got to just shuttle it all over town next week um, and just drop it off at different shops to get things like window tint exhaust I've got a few mechanical things that I'm not gonna do <laughs> so I'm gonna drop that drop it off for those so all that so this is really kind of my last job uh, with this car before we do the final breakdown of cost and the final you know driving footage and all the stuff we do at the end of a build all right so we've got to make sense out of this mess of wires there was four motors in this seat sometimes you can have up to like six um, but before we do any sort of <clears throat> modification we need to know what everything does you can see this yellow tape I've basically just been going through and figuring out which wires control which motor and the way I'm doing that I have a jump box over here and a power and a ground and process of elimination will tell you which one's which but as you can see this is forward and backward on the sliders and then we have I think this is going to be tilt no that's yeah seat back and then this is going to be tilt front and then the other one will be woo weld oh they're touching okay let's not do that <laughs> um, Anyway, you get the idea. So what we have to do is wire these up. Now these are a little bit, a little bit confusing. They just take a lot more wires than you would think. I think what I'll do is wire them and then show you the wiring instead of trying to explain it while I'm going because it is going to look pretty confusing. I pulled the uh, wiring out so it'd be easier to wire. I'm going to build my switch now. So basically, you can see I just designed this in CAD and sent it to Send Cut Send, and the tolerances are incredibly tight. Getting it started can be a challenge. There we go. Snaps in. And we have controllers for all four motors. Very cool. And then we will cut the center out of this so that this will drop in there. We can run our screws in and then we'll be ready to, uh, actually I probably won't run them in yet, but we'll be ready to wire everything through here to our switches and everything will be fixed. All right, and uh, a lot of wiring later, this is what we have. Now, it does look kind of crazy. Um, right now, I've got all my switches wired. This is my power, this is my ground. I'm pulling power and ground. I converted this black wire to ground. It was something different, some sort of switch ground or something, I don't know. And then I can't remember if it was the orange and white or the blue and white that I made power, but it's one of them. Um, so I will put connectors on those and then connect them here. And then we will be set and we can test it out. Um, it does look like a mess. It is kind of a mess. Everything's heat shrinked, which is what you really need to do to make sure that nothing gets pulled out. Um, and then I'm using these open barrel connectors. If you're thinking about doing wiring on a car, go ahead and get these. You have to order them, um, but they are so much better than like your just standard crimp. You also need these tools that it like rolls the barrel in and clamps the wire and then the sheath. It's the best way to go. Get those. 
Um, but to keep it more simple, let's flip it over this way. And basically what you're doing when you wire in one of these switches is you need power and ground. So you have electrical current flowing through the switch. Once you establish power and ground, you have two powers uh, or two, yeah, two powers coming from the motor. And depending on how the power runs through those, tells the motor to go forward or backward. So you have to run the two up to the top. And so then when you hit top, the motor will run in one direction. And then you jump those same two to the bottom and swap their position. So here you might have one and two, down here you're gonna have two and one. And so then when you run the power downwards, it's going to run it in the opposite direction. And that's the best way I can describe it. And what you end up with is kind of this mess, but what you have is in the center you have power and ground, and in the top you have one, two, and on the bottom you have two, one, or two, one, and that is what allows the motor to work in two different directions. All right, that's the best way I can describe it. I hope it made sense. It makes sense in my brain. <laughs> so I'm gonna hook this up, and then we'll run power down there underneath the seat and see if what we did actually works. Let's set this guy up. <clears throat> Let's see if we did it right. Okay. Tilt front. This should be tilting the back of the seat. All right, here is the driver's seat. We'll slide it back. And then go down. All right, I've got the other one plugged up. Let's walk around. And basically, I just kept it real loose so that if I have to change something, I can, it's real easy. There's a wire that runs from this seat underneath and back to that seat that I just plugged in. We'll see if I got it right on the first try. That's pretty good. Okay, forward and backward. All right, so that's mounted now. We can now lower it back down, move it back to a normal seating position. Look, here we go. You guys can see this is the wood grain. I showed you guys in a video yesterday how to refinish this. This was all cracking and awful. And you can see if you look underneath the clear, the cracks are still there, but it's smooth. Same here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, the cracks are still there, but it's smooth, and I think it actually looks kind of cool. It's like sort of, sort of antique, but not old and crappy. Looks good. Um, and then also something I did not show you guys is my headliner. So this is headliner version three. I'll show you version one, and then version two. And then this is its final form. You'll see I matched the headliner to the visors. Everything looks so, so much better now. Got our speakers back there. We're about to replace those. We got our lights in. I also found a reproducer of this, these covers. So those are nice and clean and awesome. Uh, for you guys that don't know, this thing, the thing that started all of the issues with this car was a leaky sunroof. And almost all Range Rovers have leaky sunroofs. It leaks down. Underneath here is some really thick sound deadening that holds water and um, everything falls apart from there. So I sealed the sunroof, it does not work anymore. This, this doesn't do anything anymore. Um, and then I made this piece, so this kind of outer piece is steel, had it, had it uh, plasma cut out, and then this is the, normally it would like slide back and forth to cover the sunroof. Um, I recovered it all in fabric this time around. The past two times I've had this, I've left this metal. I just didn't like the way it looked. And I think all fabric is the way to go. I think it looks really good. It's clean. It doesn't draw too much attention to itself, uh, which is awesome. You'll notice there's a seam right along here. That's where I actually split this headliner in two, cut four inches out of it and put it back together. You can use a long wheelbase headliner in your short wheelbase car, but you're gonna have to make some stuff. This time I, was a little more careful and you can barely even see the seam. So really happy with that. And also we have minimal wrinkles. You can see a wrinkly spot right there. Um, but other than that, the headliner came out really good. This is probably my eighth headliner to do. And it's the first one that I'm like actually proud of. Next up is the speakers. Now these speakers are original to the car. See, they're kind of rusty from this car being rained in. If you have like a 90s car and the speakers sound awful, basically any replacement speaker is going to be a huge upgrade. 
because speaker technology just, technology just comes so far. The old ones were made with paper, and so uh, they deteriorate pretty heavily over time. And, uh, and yeah, anything you can do. So I got these, and I strictly got these because of the form factor. I wanted something that looked sort of factory, which is hard to find in speakers because speaker companies love making their speakers like blue and light up and all kinds of stuff. But I found these from Kenwood, and they look pretty good. They were like $110 for one, two, three, four, for six speakers, so that's an awesome deal. And I think that they're going to look good in the car as well. And not quite factory, but like almost. And they'll all match, which is good, because another thing I don't understand, like you have this one, and that matches the ones in the roof in the back. But then you have this thing. And I'm pretty sure that's factory, but it doesn't, I mean, it, do, it just doesn't look good. So we're going to fix it. Very, very easy to replace speakers if you've never done it. All right, real quick tutorial. Up here, the screws are exposed. That's easy. Right here, a lot of times these uh, these grills just pry off. This one looks like it was maybe glued in. It looks like it was glued in. I don't want to hurt this plastic because we need to save it. There we go. Yeah, it was. See some glue right there. But pull the grill off, and then you have four screws. And then when you pull the speaker out, there's going to be two uh, plugs. Normally, they're different sizes. You have a small and a big. If these get stuck, don't pull on the wire. Pry it down here. There it goes. Plug this one up, just like the last one. Very, very simple. They're just like spade connectors. Now, this car, most cars, you have to pull the door panel off, which is not a big deal. This car, you don't. This car also has maybe the most, like, haphazardly installed speakers of any car I've ever I've ever seen and it really kind of changes the way I think about installing speakers because like the ones in the roof are just screwed into the headliner like there's no no metal mount no threads no nothing it's just literally just screwed into foam and uh, these are the same way they're just screwed into the door panel uh, normally I would be screwing them into you know the actual door frame itself but and you want to say like it's lazy and cheap and I guess in a sense it is but also like is it smart you know because <laughs> this car was made in 1989 the speakers are still here I mean all I'm saying is maybe we're overthinking it <laughs> on second thought maybe we're not overthinking it because these are trying to rip out of the door but I think that's gonna work right there now we'll do the top same thing but a little bit easier because everything's exposed Again, this one also just screwed into the door panel itself. All right, we still have to do the back speakers, but the fronts look good. I wanted to show you guys the radio I installed. This is a radio I've been eyeing for my Porsche for a while this one right here and it is made by Continental unfortunate now unfortunately I can't like show you music for real because well copyright stuff but I can tell you it makes a huge difference this radio this radio looks the part in here as you can see it doesn't like stand out it doesn't light up crazy colors it just looks like it belongs which I love but it has Bluetooth capabilities so we got radio and Bluetooth no CD player because who has CDs anymore um, but I thought it just fit the rest of the car really, really well. So there you go. That's that's the one. I really like it. May use it on another build. We also mounted whoop, mounted this guy. I decided to kind of keep it simple. This will go back in there. These are just two power wires I have to tape off and tie up. And then when you turn the key... You get... Your sniper so pretty cool setup I'm happy with it you see I tilted the oil pressure gauge just so you can see it a little bit easier from the driver's seat when you need to but hopefully you won't really need to once it's going it's going and that'll just be for diagnostics all right it's done it's buttoned up we've got new speakers there I put the new speakers in the back as well interior is complete it looks nice first time since getting the car that the interior has been 100% it 
feels good. Seat switches work. And I went ahead and screwed them in, so those are on for good. And I think they look okay. You know, considering they're universal parts, I think that uh, the aluminum bezel helps to kind of tie it all in. Oh, man, what a project. Okay, so the only things that I've got that I couldn't figure out is I can't get the fuel gauge to work. And I have no gas now, so I ran out of gas the other day, which is great. But I can't, can't figure that out. I'm going to have to let somebody else do it. Also, can't figure out how to get the windows to go up and down. So I can't, uh, I can't roll them up or down, which may end up being an issue because I'm taking it to get them tinted on Tuesday. So hopefully I can figure that out or find somebody that knows what to do with those to get those to go down. Um, what else do I have left? Air conditioner has to get charged, which we'll do. Um... I need to tune it, which will just be me driving around and logging and applying tunes. I didn't realize that you have to apply the tune that you make, so I've made a tune on this thing like three or four times, and uh, it never got applied. So pretty cool that it still runs, but also it makes more sense as to why um, it's kind of spotty. Looks like the lights are on. Like sometimes it'll run great and sometimes it won't. Seems to be... All right, lights off. It seems to me that it's just that I wasn't uploading the tune that I was making. Um, windshield wipers don't work, so I've got to get that sorted. And then the rest is all just fog lights, decals, stuff like that. So, almost done. Almost there. But I say all that to say most of that stuff is going to be done by shops and not me. So another shot of the interior. Man, I'm just so happy that it's done. And it looks pretty good. I mean, considering what we started with. Let me see if I've got a video of what we started with. And then to look at it like this, it's just, it doesn't seem like the same car. But it is definitely the same car. Here's the back. It's my favorite part. This is the tag that was on the car when I picked it up. That's the last time it was on the road when it started having fuel injection issues. All right, there you go. The outside is complete. Well, for now, we've got the details to do, but we will do them, I promise. The inside is complete for the first time in a decade, and the car runs and drives. So what's next? Well, I've got to shuttle it around town, get the windows tinted, get the exhaust built. We've got to get some mechanical jobs done that I just don't want to do, so I'm going to drop it off and let some other guys work on this thing. Um, and then when we bring it back, I'll break down the cost of every single thing. I've tracked every dollar spent on this car, and it is, we did a lot. Um, every job that was done to get it to this point and we'll get some rollers and drive it down the street and stuff and maybe even deliver it uh, to the owner on camera. That'd be cool too. We'll see. For now, just be patient with me. I'm going to be shuttling this thing around, getting everything completed on it and when it gets 100%, I'll bring it back to the channel, show you guys everything, break down the cost, break down every single job we did. I've been tracking it all in like a spreadsheet. It is unbelievable. I never would have guessed it would be this much work to get this thing back on the road. In the meantime, I'm going to check comments and go see what you guys want to see from Bill. Finish Assassin.